1918, uh, World War I was coming uh, to an end. Uh, and uh, at its culmination, there was the uh, Paris, the Paris Peace Conference. Okay, and uh, as part of the Paris Peace Conference, there, um, there, there were a number of actually quite prominent attendees and or participants rather, and, and they included people like Lloyd George from Great Britain, uh, Clemencian from France, uh, Signor Orlando from Italy, and uh, President Woodrow Wilson from the United States. Um, and as a result of the conference, the League, the League of Nations was established. Okay, and the first president of the League of Nations um, was N. P. Hymans. Uh, he was from uh, Belgium. All right, and uh, just a couple of notes that the League of Nations itself was officially founded in nineteen. Uh, I believe it was 1920, uh, and uh, it was started in Geneva. Okay, so in Geneva. Now, Sultan Muhammad Chagha Khan was a representative for the Indian delegates, and he even attended things like the disarmament conferences that were held in, in February of 1932 and also in February of 1933. Um, so it's kind of important to keep in mind. And, and in general, you know, he was a very active member of the League, and he gave a number of speeches. For example, in... Um, in 1934, uh, and also in uh, 1936, uh, Sultan Mamacha gave speeches. In, uh, the, the first speech was, I believe, on September 27th, 1934. The second one was on uh, September 29th, uh, 1936. And so as a result, it was, was pretty clear that he was very active um, in the league. And that activity was recognized and honored. And in fact, at around 19... 37, he was made the League's president. He was made president of the League of Nations. He actually gave his inaugural address as, as president in uh, September of 1937. And uh, in referencing that address, uh, Sir Samuel Hoare, who was the uh, ex-Secretary of State of India, remarked that, quote, the Aga Khan does not belong to one community or one country. He is a citizen of the world, uh, par excellence. All right, I want to read one more um, a couple of more things around his placement. So when he, when he was actually elected president, uh, you know, there were 49 votes, all of which were made in his favor. And his placement as president you know, was, was very exciting for a number of people. It was obviously a, a very prominent position to hold on the world stage. And uh, if you recall, I made some videos on Aldegar University, which Sultan Muhammad Shah played a pivotal role in extending and expanding. And, and the members of that university were certainly very excited about this broader role. And writing in uh, a book, uh, there was a, a man by the name of Mushir Hussein Kutwai of Gadia, and uh, he actually wrote uh, the following. He said, quote, In the League of Nations, in the presence of so many learned persons who claimed to represent nations scattered all over the world, but whose mentality was mostly materialistic, stood up a man, a responsible, thoroughly, educated, well-experienced, well-traveled, well-polished man, a gentleman, a nobleman, respected by one and all. And he proclaimed at the top of his voice that he was proud to belong to the glorious Brotherhood of Islam. It was indeed thrilling. The bold announcement was thrilling. The occasion when it was made was thrilling. What a slap it was on the face of those cowards who felt shy at the name of Islam. The Aga Khan's words raised the prestige of Islam in an assembly which was almost prejudiced against it. Quote, I was overjoyed. I am a man hard to bend before anybody, not even before a king, but I would gladly bow before a man who spoke from his heart those thrilling words. So it was a very powerful, powerful moment um, in history. And um, I think overall it, it speaks volumes about the contributions that, that Sultan Muhammad Shah made, uh, not just in, in terms of education or in terms of elevating the Indian subcontinent or, or establishing Pakistan, but really more broadly on the world stage. And he made such a broad impact in, in many regards.